Hey, good morning guys. This is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video I'm going to share with you a practical demonstration of the associative difference. Recently I was at a customer site and they were unfamiliar with some of the unique differentiators within Click, one of them being the associative difference. And they've seen demonstrations of it, but they haven't really seen it within a use case that was a little bit more familiar to them. For this particular example, sales was pretty familiar to them, so it actually fit right in. So what I chose to do today is spend a few minutes demonstrating the associative difference, but instead of using a movies database or fruits and colors, actually dive right into a couple of those differentiators from a published example. I've done this demonstration a few times before, especially on my getting started webinars and in customer event settings, and it seems to resonate very well with everyone. So I wanted to share this with you today. So let's get started. I'm in my ClickSense enterprise server at the moment, and I have an app that has been published to the stream sales. And this particular app has been around for a couple of years. It's our demo consumer sales app but it does have some really good structure in the data that helps you demonstrate the associative difference in a practical example. So I'm going to jump right in, click on the consumer sales app. And then within the app, I have a number of different base sheets. I'm interested in, let's say, improving or uncovering different aspects of sales rep performance. So I'll click on the sales rep performance tab and I can see my visualizations. So let's pretend we really don't know where to start. So one aspect of the associative difference is the ability to search all of your data. When the data is loaded into the associative engine, it indexes all of the dimensions, the fields, the who, what, where, and when, if you will, and its values, and makes it available to search within this search bar across the top. Now, depending on these values, it also shows you potential relationships of those values, but we'll save that for another video. So let's say, I didn't know exactly where to start, but I did want to uncover low performers. So I know I'm looking for individuals that have performed low. So I'm just going to start typing in the value low. Now, as I do that, these values across the top are recommendations or suggestions based on what I typed in. So for example, are we looking for the value low, low performer, low fat, or lower? And then these particular values exist in these fields, sales rep performance, customer address one, ship to customer address one, basket product description, and product. Okay, and you can see where these values lie. Are we looking at a street name or are we looking at a product name or product description? Well, now I have an idea because of the suggestion that we do have a field called sales rep performance and there is a value called low performer. So that's simple. We're just going to select that here. And now all my visualizations have updated immediately. And there was no manual wiring when developing this. The associative engine takes care of all of the relationships, not only within the data values, but also within the visualizations. So at this point, let's say I want to focus in on these bottom three low performers. So directly within this table, I can select these three reps and then confirm the selection. Now at this point, I am looking at just these three individuals. These are my selected values. And you can see across the top, the selections are maintained. The green is showing me what's selected. And then there's also some other bars here. Some are in gray, such as light gray or dark gray. And we'll touch on that in a minute. So through the use of, let's say, proximity and color, we can see that this particular area of products could be an area where we're losing the most customers. Or in this case, you can see these products have high margin values, but they're low in sales. So if we're looking at improving sales rep performance, we could make a suggestion at this point. Let's start selling more of these high margin products. So let's say that's suggestion number one. And at this point also, if you're familiar with data storytelling, we could take this as a snapshot and we can create a narrative and report on that later when we create our data story. Okay, so moving on, now we want to look at this, let's say from a geographical perspective. I can open up my sheet selector and I'm interested in looking at sales and margin analysis. I can see the thumbnail has a geographic map, so I'm going to select that. Now notice, all my selections are still maintained navigating from sheet to sheet. And what is immediately pointed out to me front and center, these particular reps that are low performers aren't selling anything in the Northeast or have no sales in the Northeast. And you can see that as the chart has insufficient data to display the values as well as the gray uh, within the chart. So at this point, 
I might uncover more information by learning more about the other low performers. Now you might ask, well, how would I know that? And that's because of what we call progressive disclosure, where you see these bars inside the selections. I see some light gray in here. Now you've heard of green, white, and shades of gray. Well, here's where this comes in, and I'm gonna break it down. So to keep it relatively simple, sales rep performance is a field, and it has two values, low performer and high performer. So we're looking at low performers. That's what's selected in green. Now, high performer is dark gray or unrelated because if you're a low performer, you're not a high performer. And notice that it's 50-50. So the bar is displaying low performer and high performer. So basically two values. Now, in the sales rep name, these three reps are the ones we're looking at because they're selected in green. The light gray are other low performers we are not looking at. And then the dark gray are high performers, or therefore the unrelated values to the selections that we're currently looking at. So there might be something to learn about these other low performers. So right here, where I can click the selection menu, we have some helper functions, such as select alternative. And by doing that, it selects the other low performers that we weren't looking at. And through immediate visualization through color, you can see that those low performers are selling within the Northeast. And the top product that they're selling more of, in this case here, is fresh vegetables. So let's say those other reps that were low performers that weren't doing that well, were not selling in the Northeast and maybe weren't selling enough fresh vegetables. So we uncovered a couple of other findings here to help improve their performance, such as concentrate some more of your sales within the Northeast region. Also perhaps focus more on fresh vegetable sales. And then we also have those high margin products. Okay, so that's an example of how the associative difference can bring information that could be hidden with other query tools, for example, and information that might be filtered out and would not allow you to discover easily. So the associative difference helps prompt you for additional questions that you might not have thought to ask as well. This is one practical example that you could use that can help demonstrate the capability of the associative difference. All right, guys, that's my time. I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them where this video was posted, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.